Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be talking about Tropical Depression 7 that came from previously known Invest 96L and it is expected to become Fiona maybe by tonight or in the early morning hours of tomorrow. And of course, it is going to be a threat to portions of the Northern Caribbean. And so before I go into details with this system, Okay, so let's go ahead and get on with it. And we're looking at a current satellite view of the North Atlantic. And there we have some activity taking place off Florida and in the vicinity of the Northwestern Bahamas, also in the Gulf of Mexico and portions of the Western Caribbean. And then out in the main development region, just to the east of the Leeward Islands, there we are seeing that we have our tropical depression number seven. And so looking at it on uh, at a closer view here, we're seeing that it is not the most symmetrical cyclone right now but it is getting itself together and I mean uh, this strengthening of it has been quite remarkable because it is not in an environment that is highly conducive yet here we have a tropical depression that is expected to become a tropical storm and so this is a problem for portions of the northern Caribbean as I said earlier so let's go ahead and talk about it we're now looking at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center and as of now watches and warnings are not issued but more than than likely they will maybe tonight or tomorrow morning so in that update video that I'll make at that time I will include them of course but we know for a fact that portions of the area such as Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands and the Leeward Islands and even Hispaniola as well will be impacted by the system as we head into this weekend and heading towards the the early part of the new week so a general westward motion is expected of the system and of course it is accelerating westward at 13 miles per hour with maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour and so it should be approaching the lesser antilles maybe by some time early on saturday and it is likely to bring a lot of heavy rainfall and gusty winds along with it so even though it is expected to be a tropical storm and won't intensify much it is still going to be a problem because as i said in my previous video if you watched it the main problem with any tropical cyclone is always with the rainfall or the storm surge but in this case we're talking about the rainfall here the heavy torrential rains are likely to result in flash flooding in some areas that are flood prone so if you're in the northern caribbean again the leeward islands virgin islands puerto rico hispaniola which is inclusive of haiti and the dominican republic please be aware of this happening so i would even go on to say maybe the turks and caicos islands as well so by sometime late saturday we're expecting somewhat of a west northwestward motion to northwestward motion expected so the system should be making that curve up to the north which means that it will likely miss cuba and jamaica but of course things can change between now and then so we'll just have to keep watching the system all right and how are conditions out there why is the environment not very conducive for us to see this intensify into something very major let's get on with it so first we're taking a look at at this ocean temperature map and we're seeing that ocean temperatures are favorable right the system is located just within that region and tropical cyclones need at least sea surface temperatures of 26 26 and a half degrees celsius and here we're seeing 29 and 30 well ocean temperatures aren't the only thing that need to be conducive for tropical cyclone development and intensification we also need a moist environment as well as those favorable upper level winds and so let us go ahead and first talk about that moisture so uh, the greens and that slight blue shade indicate more of the moisture meanwhile the yellows indicate dry air and so we see that dry air is up ahead for the system so that is going to play a part in keeping the intensity of it at a minimum so we're expecting this to be a weak tropical storm but nonetheless it is likely to be uh, very dangerous as it is going to be making its approach to the northern Caribbean and so next thing we're looking at is the wind shear and so uh, this might be a little bit confusing but where we have the red lines that indicate strong upper level winds or unfavorable wind shear the yellow means neutral meanwhile the green means favorable and so there we have a uh, tropical depression 7 located just within that region and let me tell you if this was a little bit more south in latitude then we could have been looking at a tropical storm by this point because conditions in terms of that shear would have been more conducive so the shear really helps to weaken the system that's the reason much intensification is not expected but as I I said this system here has really uh it's really been 
resilient in all these unfavorable conditions here. So even though they're there, we still have it being persistent and pulling through. And I mean, a lot of us should be like that. Whenever situations arrive our way, we should be persistent and resilient. All right, let's go ahead now and talk about what is expected in terms of uh, the ensemble tracks. Let's see what the models are showing, starting off with the Euro tracks here. So we see them picking up on the system, becoming a tropical storm. We see quite a bit of members here. And then they're all unanimous with that continuous westward track. However, going to Tuesday thereabout, we start to see a bit of uh, dispersion in the track. Some are expecting that it will continue a little bit more west, heading to the Western Caribbean. Some showing an earlier turn up to the north. And also take a look at this. Another wave potentially make its way toward the Caribbean, which isn't uncommon or unexpected because we're in September. This is what happens in September. We typically see uh, quite a bit of activity in the tropics and especially for the caribbean as well so we may be having another wave to watch as we are going to be heading into next week so uh, that is what the euro tracks are showing let's go on to gfs and gfs uh, the gfs members there they are picking up on it showing intensification but we're not seeing a whole lot of them uh really continuing with this system here uh but we have some that are expecting that it is going to be significantly intensified once it makes that northward turn so so all in all, I really think that this system here, regardless of its intensity, it is still going to be a problem for the Lesser Antilles. We've had systems that don't even become tropical storms, tropical depressions that have caused major damage in terms of all the flooding and the rainfall. And this thing here is not going to be moving very, very quickly. And because of that, it can be persistent in an area for an extensive period of time, just dumping a lot of heavy rainfall. And that is going to lead to even more more flooding uh an increased risk of flooding in flood prone areas so that is what is on the horizon as we're going to be heading into this weekend and heading into early next week guys so if you're in portions of the northeastern caribbean please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe it is likely that some islands will be under watches or warnings maybe by tonight or tomorrow as i said earlier so uh, don't take those lightly and please uh just stay safe guys because this thing here could really pack a punch and so of course i'm going to be keeping you updated once it is necessary so join me tomorrow for my next update video and that is it for now so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask the question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise